Oxwish is ready and about to get started. She's uh, talking to us about trading on the side of institutional money in gaps. And um, I just have a little bit. I think she'll tell us more about herself when she comes <laughs> on. But um, I wanted to tell you she's the founder and owner of an international education and company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. And the method she uses, she created it, she teaches it, she owns it. It's unique to the stock swish. And the method is based on one strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. Welcome, Melissa. And um, you just have to unmute yourself. Hello, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Terrific. Let me know if you can see my screen. Let's see. Can you see my screen? Yes. Wonderful. Thanks so much for having me, Sherry. Welcome, everyone. An exciting time right now and a great time to be speaking. If I wouldn't be talking to you, I'd probably have CNBC on live right now because there is um, a Fed meeting going on right now. And even though they wow. came out, can you hear me? Yes. I said, wow, I forgot. I didn't forget. I knew about it, but yeah. I didn't realize it was right during today. That's okay. Well, the, they, they upped rates a quarter of 25 basis points, which I expected after all the bank collapse in the last two weeks. However, it's really going to be what Powell says, which he's talking right now, that's really going to affect the market. So we had a slight bump up and a rally here in the last 30 minutes, but whether or not it holds will depend on exactly what he says. So I'm sort of watching the sidelines If we have time at the end. I know I have an hour to speak today. I will pull up some charts and we can talk about that at the end. But this is a great topic for today to talk about trading on the side of institutional money. Why? Because this market, January, February, March 2023's market, I found to be in a very, very, very range bound way. So you can pick a side to trade. You can play both sides of the market if you want, but we haven't had any follow through any follow through at all since January of 2023. Actually, if you go back really till November, even October, we've had no follow through up or down in the overall market. So it's been a tough, tough time for traders unless you're choosing individual stocks to trade. If you wanna trade the SPY, if you wanna trade the QQQs, which I do sometimes trade, the reality is you're not getting the commitment from institutional money in this market. You're just not getting it. You're getting slight moves up, you're getting slight moves down, and every time people get in and think, oh, this is it, this is it, we're going to go run back right up to the highs, like people thought in January, then in February we sold off. So I think in this type of environment, the best thing you could do for yourself is to find selective stocks to trade. What did we do today? My live trading room, I run a live trading room, we shorted Nike. We shorted Nike, I called a put, it fell, it worked, we did it. So that was on earnings, okay? Nike had earnings out last night. Now, there are times when I do stocks, when I take trades that are non-earnings gaps, okay? So again, sometimes I will do specific stocks for other reasons, could be news gaps, could be, could be something like today, okay? You may have some volatility going into tomorrow, gaps in the market, whatever, uh, things have to do with market stocks that I may look at. But I think the best place to focus on right now, so far, until we get out of the range in this market, is to focus on individual stocks, specific trades, and particularly earnings moves. And if anybody has a question, you can just plop it in the room and I'll see the question as we go along here today. So if you have questions as well, you can always email me after the fact at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I also appear on TV. I appear on Fox News, CBS News, News Nation, Cheddar. I pretty much am on every single network and I've been talking about the market and how I believe that the market, uh, that we could possibly go into a recession towards the end of 2023. Now, again, I will listen to what uh, the Fed chair says after my lecture here today, uh, but the reality is that if they don't keep raising rates, okay, which is part of the problem why we had the bank issues in the last two weeks, which I can talk about a little bit more later, but if they don't keep raising rates, what is the Fed going to do to curb inflation? We have a situation where inflation has gone up and it's pittered off a little bit. I mean, and re in reality, it's hardly come down at all. If you look at where we were 24 months ago, three years ago, the cost of food has gone up so much dramatically and oil has gone up so much. And even though it's ticked down slightly, the cost of oil per barrel is still too high. 
And the major problem with many of the things that we buy, food, everything, everything we buy, I just moved, I bought furniture, everything gets to you in a truck. So the cost of diesel fuel is too high. And unless that comes down, the Fed can keep bumping up rates, and I'm not sure if it really gets a handle on inflation, all right? And part of the reason why we have an issue right now with is because the, this administration is not uh, friendly to the energy uh, sector. So I think that we're in for a situation in the, in, the, in the coming six to seven, nine months, possibly could be even into 2024, where we will see a turbulent market. So the best thing you can do for yourself is have a plan of action to trade, know what you're doing, know why you're doing it, set your risk, and most importantly, get out of trades when you're up. Again, we get out of the Nike today, bing, bang, boom. We were out, done, it continued, it went past where I get out of it, it doesn't matter. I, I made money, I was done, it was done quickly in the morning, I take trades, I'm usually out by 10 a.m. Eastern time. It's chunking it out to be successful as a day trader, you must learn to book profits. It's too choppy, it's too choppy, like I said. Even though people are very bullish on this market right now, I am not, okay? Um, I'm cautious, and I think that we are still in a range. Again, we're going to know a lot more in the next 24 hours after he speaks, and then we see how the market reacts tomorrow morning in the gap. <laughs> then again, any questions, plop them in the room. Feel free. But anyways, getting back to the overall market, 2022, okay, was a great year to short. And for those of you that don't know me, I do prefer to short, Okay. If you don't know how to short, if you don't know what to short, if you don't know when to short, then you missed out in a great year to actively day trade the market in 2022. And again, there's opportunities in any type of market, bullish or bearish, to short. But in this type of environment, you do need to know how to do both, okay? You really have to become an expert in both, both longs and shorts, all right? Now, I put here the stats for all of last year just to give you an idea if you wish $2,800 per trade, this was our stats for the day trader, run a live day trader room. These trades were called in the room for 2022 for the whole year, $651,079 for the whole year. This is all the trades we did in 2022. Most of them were shorts. Some of them were longs, but most were shorts. This is, these are day trades on margin with an average risk of 2,800. Now, I also do options, okay? The options that I do come not in a live room, but on a newsletter where the trades are emailed to you live. Uh, I risk more money in my options. You can risk less. You can risk $100 a trade if you want. You can take one contract. So this is with an average risk of $8,000 per trade. You could have made over $3 million last year taking all my trades. Most of these were puts. We did do some calls. This is all the stats, winners and losers for last year. We had, like I said, a very, very good late year last year as far as win ratio percentage. And again, it was a great year to short, all right? Now this year, you have to be more selective. So this is the kind of year where people that are day trading that aren't doing well, they're gonna get cut out, bing, bam, boom, okay? They're gonna have horrible years. If you really wanna get better at your trading, the, the, the market will push you and give you an opportunity to excel, to succeed, to push yourself to do better, all right? Trading during these times, when we have the volatility, gives you an opportunity to make money if you know what to do, okay? If you know what to do. And again, nothing in life that is great comes without taking chances or risk. You have to be willing to take risks to make money in the market. And if you're someone that's been thinking about trading for a long, long time and doing this actually for a career, it's a transition, all right? It's a transition period. It's, it's, everybody wants to have everything yesterday, today, tomorrow, everybody were in, in a very impatient society. But the fact is that you have to be willing to do the hard work to get there. And if you, if you do, you can. If someone said, you know, five years from now, you could be making a million dollars a year, what would you do to make that happen for yourself? So that's really how you have to look at it. Have goals and be willing to do what you need to do to achieve those goals. You take baby steps, but you have to take some steps forward or you're never gonna get there, all right? So there's a difference between risk, gotta take risk to make money, and then there's also a difference between risk and risk for risk sake. So it's calculated risk. So when I get up in the morning and decide what I wanna trade, what direction, it's using calculated risk. And that's again where you set your risk, whether it's $2,800 a trade or $500 a trade or 3,000, whatever you want to risk, I take the trade, I put in a stop, and if it stops me out, I lose. But that is still looking at it 
and using discipline with calculated risk to take a trade. And again, any questions, write it in the room. So if you, you know, unless you've been on vacation, you know, in an island with, with no internet, you, you know about the bank collapse of Silicon Valley Bank that happened in the last two weeks and all the scuttlebutt that happened preceding that. Again, I anticipate, you know, the, the meeting today and what Pal says is he's talking right now, we'll have, he's going to address that, all right? Uh, the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, has been addressing it. She addressed it this week when she was talking to, and obviously there was a run in the bank. That's what happened. So I spent 17 years in the banking industry. I started my career actually as a teller. I used to cash checks. That's how I started my, my life in the world of finance. So I, you know, started it from the ground up. And I understand very, very well how the banking system works. I've worked for some of the largest banks on the planet, and I've also worked for small regional banks. In fact, I started out at a small regional bank that got bought and bought and bought, but the reality is that we need regional banks, okay? Regional banks would do loans for small businesses and individuals that large banks would never do, and so it's important to have them. And if you've ever seen the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, and it's a Christmas movie, usually it's on a Christmas time. If you've never seen it, you should watch it. It, it's a story where it kind of explains what happens when you have a run in the bank, because a lot of people don't understand. And again, I do because of my banking industry. If everybody went and tried to take all of their cash out of the bank today, right now, tomorrow, at any point in time, they wouldn't be able to do it. Why? Banks don't have the cash on hand for you to go out and do that. And again, when banks, when you look at a bank, when you, if you ever look at a, 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 at a bank's assets, total assets, they're including many things in that. They're including stocks, they're including bonds. They're including cash as well. So, you know, what happened with Silicon Valley Bank, and I'll just quickly, you know, talk about this for a minute, was uh, they, it, they were invested in long-term bonds, okay, which usually in a low interest rate environment, which we are not in right now, but in an interest rate environment where rates are low or going down, those would be very good assets to hold, okay? And an interest rate environment where rates are going up, which we've seen the last six months, which consequently is where the market is at in the range. So ever since the Fed started bumping up rates a lot, going back, like I said, October, October, November, December, January, February, March, so six months, the market has been in a range ever since the Fed's been bumping rates out to try to con control inflation, which I don't think they've got a hold of, and they definitely don't. That's why they raise rates again now. People wanted them not to raise rates because of the bank collapse. They did anyways. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, when you're in an interest rate environment where rates are going up, the value of long-term bonds goes down. Now, if you can hang on to those bonds until the end of the, the bond term, you're fine. You're fine, okay? However, people wanted their cash out of Silicon Valley Bank, and when they, when they went to liquidate the assets then to sell the bonds, then they were worth less and quite a lot less than what they what they were when they got them or if they had held the bond to, 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 the, to the term. Okay, so that's what happened really there with that. It was poor money management, poor management overall, poor risk management. So the one important takeaway from the Silicon Valley Bank class, which is a really big bank, okay, the important takeaway is that risk management is important even if you have a lot of money or a small amount of money. I, and again, I've been teaching people, I've had the stock switch for 10 years going on 11. I teach people from all over the world. A lot of people complain, I don't have enough money, Melissa, to trade. I don't have enough money to trade. I don't have enough money to do your class. I don't have money for this, that. If you had 500 grand in an account and you didn't have any risk management, you could lose it all. You could lose it like that, okay? So this bank, okay, had, had lots of money, poor risk management, and they went under, okay? So you can take a small account and trade, take one contract, 100 share lots, you can trade and grow that account slowly and do well, all right? Yes, you can. Having a lot of money does not necessarily mean you are going to be successful. Of course, everyone in an ideal world would like to have good control, good discipline, good money management, a good system, and a lot of money to trade so they can risk more, all right? But that is a reality for a lot of people. But the, the takeaway is you need good risk management no matter how much money you have. Okay, so can you do well during these times when inflation is high, when we could be going into recession, when the markets are at an unknown point? Okay, we're nowhere near the highs. I don't even know why anyone is so bullish on this market 
because we're absolutely, absolutely nowhere near the highs. But the reality is that you still can make money during this market. And like I said, you have to know how to short. Why so many traders, I have no idea, why so many traders want to go long, 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 it doesn't make sense to me. I always love to short. I've always loved to short. I've always veered to the short side first, even though I sometimes go long. We went long Adobe. That was a nice trade. Probably got out of that a little too early. But that was a nice day trade to the upside. It was a long and we did calls in that as well. You can look at that chart. We did it after the earnings too. But again, a lot of people work hard and they never get there. They never succeed. They never make a lot of money. They dream of doing it. They're not willing to take the sacrifices of the risk and they never do anything to really help themselves move forward, get ahead. So you can't, you don't want to waste your time doing things that aren't going to work. You don't want to waste your time, even though sometimes it's important to go to webinars and events like today. You don't want to waste your time doing that forever. Eventually, you have to say, I'm going to actually trade live. I'm going to commit. I'm going to learn something. I'm going to be smart. I'm going to decide to trade and move forward. So I think it's important to understand that you may, ha you know, you may be impacted by this inflation cycle where you have a set salary, all right? But you can make extra money in the market. And you need to understand how to do that. And you need a quality system to be successful too. So the central structure to trading results must be a strategy with a solid foundation that's based on accurately reading price action and advanced technical analysis. So that's how I make all of my decisions, okay? And I'll be the first one to tell you when trading times are easy, and I will be the first one to tell you when it's choppy as well. And like I said, I believe this is choppy. If anyone says to you they're getting the market accurately every day and reading it right, they're full of crap. This has been a challenging market. In fact, two weeks ago, I said in the trading room, I said, you know what? Whatever you think the market's going to do, is ex it's, gonna, it's not. Whatever you think it's going to do, it's going to do exactly what you think it's not going to do because that's the times we're in. It's one of the things that people get frustrated about trading. But guess what? You either decide you're going to get better, push through it, or choose specific stocks to trade that will go and have momentum moves on that particular day that have nothing to do with the market and they don't need the market. They don't need the market to move higher, they don't need the market to move lower, okay? Because until the market gets out of the range, you know, you either play both sides or you're almost scalping, okay? So we're still early enough in the year, still way early enough in the year to set your goals for the year. I'm a very goal-oriented person. How much money do you wanna make this month, this week? What's your risk? Put a plan in place to achieve your financial goals for 2023. It's important to empower yourself to trade the market successfully. You want to do well. So everyone that comes to my trading room has to have take my class. That is a, a prerequisite for joining my room because I want people to be successful. And if they didn't take my class, they're not going to understand what I'm doing in the live room because the trades go so fast and they set up very, very quickly. Any questions here while I'm going along? <clears throat> I have the little chat box up if anybody has any questions. Is everyone listening to me or are you listening, are you listening to Pal? <laughs> I'll have to look later and see what the market's doing. Anyways, one nice thing about day trading is you can work from home, all right? That is a nice benefit. For me, I work from home. Again, you need a computer, you need live charts, okay? You need the pre-market, the post-market. You need live data and you can do it and you can make your own hours trading now personally i like to trade in the morning between 9 30 and 10 a.m eastern time but you know some people will trade all day i prefer to trade the morning first half an hour an hour of the day when i'm trading and it's really a dream job in the sense that you don't have to work 40 hours a week all right so it's the market's only open for six and a half. And like I said, I don't trade all day. I might once in a blue moon, like today I'm watching what's happening. If I wasn't here talking to you, I'll be watching what's happening right now. Maybe I trade it, but I'm doing this. But in general, I'm done in the morning and I'm, I'm just done. And as you get better at what you're doing, you can risk more. And that's where the idea of unlimited income potential is, is something that is very aspirational for people. Because if you're stuck in a job where you make say 75, 80 grand a year, and then all of a sudden, eggs are going for, you know, $7 a dozen. We're going to get the extra money to pay the eggs. You're either spending, you know, less money on something else or you're putting it on a credit card or what are you going to do? And this is where a lot of people are right now. Um, someone is saying about 25K. About, well, let's talk about it. Well, there's two things we can talk about as far as stats. Again, I'm not a broker. 
But the rules are for retail traders in the US, you need a minimum of 25,000 to have a margin account to actively day trade as many trades as you want in and out. That's the rule. You get four to one margin. Now, if you want to do options, okay, an option is you pay the cost of the contract. You can open up an options account with $2,000. Now, that would be a cash account. You could set it up that way. That is not a margin account where you take the equity trades. That would be where you could do the options accounts. The options trades will be an options account. There are also prop places that you can go to. You can check out any one number of them where they give you 10 to one margin. And you can put up, say, $5,000. You'd have $50,000 in buying power then with 10 to 1 margin. Or like I said, do the options. If you have less than $25,000, many, many people like to do options. Why? Because you don't have to worry about something called buying power, which we can talk about a little bit more later. Does that answer your question? And again, we were talking about the bank failures. Again, I don't want to get too off topic here. But $250,000 is the minimum FDIC depends how you title the accounts. But let's just say you're a single person. Uh, 250 is the max. Now, they covered all the assets with the banks that went under, which was highly unusual and very, uh, the, that was very, that was, that was something that came out that they have not made official whether or not they're going to do that. And Yellen didn't really address that the other day when she talked. It was controversial because they felt like they were bailing out big, big companies. But in reality, there were many companies that couldn't make payroll going into that Friday when the FDIC took over that bank, SVB. And if they hadn't covered the deposits of those, of those many, many companies, they wouldn't have been able to make payroll. And it would have been a trickle down effect where it would have affected a lot of people, a lot of industries. And it just would have, it would have been like a whole big mishmash. The problem is banks are connected. Everything's connected. This is where we live, and it's sort of like a house of cards. And this is the problem right now that the, and the challenge that the Fed is, is, is facing in reference to inflation. We had so much stimulus, so much free money. Congress keeps adding on to the debt. Interest rates were low for far too long now, and now they're bumping them up too fast, which is why banks that you know, were invested in long-term bonds basically got screwed in the last couple of months. But you know, even last year, again, talking about risk management, SVB had no idea there was going to be a, a run on the banks for the people to take their cash out, the deposits out. However, again, knowing that we were in an interest rate environment where rates were going up because the Fed said they were going to keep raising rates, they could have sold some of those bonds at that point and saved some of the money, even though they would have been worth less, rather than letting them go to where they were in 2023. Because obviously, as each month went on with the rate hikes, they were worth less and less and less. But you know, you get something called CIPIC insurance if you have an account at a retail broker. These are all questions that you should ask the broker. These are all things that you need to know. You should also understand when you go into a bank and open up an account and make deposits, what's going on too. And again, I don't want to get too off topic, but I'm very experienced in the banking industry and now trading as well for 15 years I've been trading. So, you know, my whole career between trading and banking spans 30 plus years. And it's, it's a very complex structure, but... It's something that you need to know because you need to know where your money is, okay? And you need to be up on these things. That's the best way that I can put it. Okay, getting back to what I was saying. Trading. Do you know the right way to read a chart? Well, you should. If you do not, you should not be trading at all because you need to know when somebody's going up and you need to know when somebody's going down because you're only going to make money going long, something that moves higher, and you're only going to make money shorting when something falls. As simple as that sounds, it's something that people just don't pay attention to. So my strategy involves gaps, okay? And one strategy is all you need to be successful in the market. That's it. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that and they fail all the time. There also is no magic indicator that will tell you what to do and exactly when, specifically in these times, but all the time, there isn't. If there is, everybody would have it and it would be worthless actually as an indicator. So those things are overlays. You should not be making trading decisions based on them. If you can learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps, then you don't need to do anything else. Because if your reason for doing this trade is to make money, this will make you money. So it's following the patterns of institutional money in the market. Now, I was talking about this earlier, goal setting. Think about where you want to be at the end of the year with your trading, if you're trading now, or even financially. 
So you're not even trading, you're thinking about doing it. Do you wanna start trading, start making money, and by 12, 31, 23, be in a better place financially than you are now? Have more money in your checking account, more money in your saving account, more money in your trading account. This is important. Success in the market is about mastering a skill. You gotta get good. And that's how you make large, consistent profits. And you need to know how to do it in any market. This market, bullish markets, bearish markets, the whole shebang, okay? Now, getting back to when I like to trade, I like to trade in the first half hour of the day. 9.30, the market opens, I'm in Manhattan, and I like to be done by 10, 10, 15, the latest, okay? I'm looking for gaps, and like I said, my strategy is called the golden gap. Where did I come up with that? It's like finding gold in the market. If I find one, Nike was one of those today. Like I said, we shorted it. You can pull up the chart. It looks at 26 points of the daily chart of a stock. The rating system is a checklist. So checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. The points is what you learn in my class, and that predicts price direction correctly when a stock is gapping. So in the case of Nike, I saw it last night. I knew we were going to do it today. I knew if the gap held, we were going to do it today. I knew we were going to short it and it worked. The points tell you where the money is flowing. So what happened today with Nike? It got dumped, boom. It got sold off, plus shorts were in it too, okay? That's how you know where to take it to get the right direction for profit. So since I devised a system, it took me about three years. Like I said, I've been trading for 15. I've realized that gaps have 80% of the move in the first half of the hour of the day. So this, there's no point in trading for six and a half hours. It's the money move. You get in, get out. You play the move, you're done. This also makes it possible for people who are doing other jobs to trade in the morning and do other things. You just want that big move. That's it. You get the big move. You don't have to worry about the shakes and jitters. You don't have to worry about the Fed talking at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You need momentum to make money in any type of market, and the volatility pains you when you get it in the right direction. Okay? Any other questions here as I'm going along? So I was talking about the market. I just clipped here about since January. Well, since the first day of the year here, which was the third. So let's talk about gaps. What is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. Simple. How do we start out the year? Let's take a look at it. So this was the last day of the year, the 30th. Closed here, gapped up. Started out the year up. And then what did we do? We fell. We didn't start out the year that great, actually. So we failed on a bullish gap up to start the year 2023. That's not giving me the warm and fuzzies for the year, just so you know. Now, we did rally in January, and everybody got crazy bullish. We lost it all in February. Again, I'm just showing here February and March. Now, success and large profits come from what? Quality, not quantity. One trade a day, that's it. That's all you need. The more trades you take, the higher potential for losses. So the idea is to do one trade, make the money, and stop. It's not trade, trade, trade all day. It's like if you go gambling, you go to Atlantic City or something. I've, I've never been big in, big in Atlantic City. Um, but the reality is that you're going to give it back at some point if you're ahead. So you stop when you're up. The philosophy behind my 26-point system is to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. That's what I want. Big moves on the day, chunking it out, a dollar, two dollars. Early confirmation of my bias in the move in the morning between 9.30 and 10 and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward because that's really what I want. Now, when oh, all the things were happening about the banks, we had JPM, this fell, fell off a planet. We had a big trade in this. Again, you could have done an option. If you don't have a margin account, you could have bought a put in this or you can do it as a, as a, as a margin trade. We did this as a day trade. Entry was 135.35. With 4,000 shares, it's an average of $3,000 risk. This is not the buying power. This is a risk where you put it in a stop. So if this would have failed, which it didn't, you would have lost three grand. Now, the buying power you would have needed is what? It's always the cost of the stock, which varies, times the share quantity, divided by the margin you have, which if you had an account, I'd say someplace like Ameritrade, I appear on Ameritrade's network, it's four to one. Okay. So 25 grand would get you what? 100,000 in BP. You need a little bit more than that to do even 1,000 shares of this with a cost of 135. This was a nice move though. Again, we want big moves, big, big fat moves. This was a short, fell, $4, boom, out of the sky. Profit was 14,600. Let's take a look at it. Day here was big fat red bar. Now, again, what do I trade? Gaps. Stock closed here, gap down. Stock closed here at 138, boom. Open in the morning, 
136 and change, fall off a planet. I could have even gotten a better exit in this again. This kept going. So a really nice move to the downside in JPM. Oh, here, here it is again. <coughs> so this is the daily. So this is institutional what? Selling. A dump. A dump down. Dump the stock. Again, all banks were under pressure during that time. Regional banks, many of them were halted. We did not trade them. Scary to be in a stock that's halted, so we didn't do it. Okay. What if you had a smaller risk? 2,000 shares. 1,500 risk. You could have made $7,300. Divide this by two again. 750. You could have made over three grand. Again, you have to be normal. You have to look at your risk. You have to look at your cash. Again, the problem with the with the bank failures, though, was they were betting, betting out too big. They were taking too much risk in, in a wrong interest rate environment. So you see, again, you have to be considerate of your cash and your risk, but you can still make money. You need quality trades. So I'm looking for gaps at rate over 20 points per my system. You wait for the ones that are good. You look for high odds. That's what it has to be. This is the same in anything. This is like if you were playing sports or going for through an interview for a job. My niece actually is a dancer. She's a ballerina. I encouraged her to audition. She's in New York going to ballet school. I encouraged her to audition for the Rockettes. She's, she, she's, I'm trying to get her up on it. She's like, oh, it's so hard. I said, go for it, go for it, go for it. Again, you go for it. You know, you got to go for it in life. You put the odds in your favor by doing what? She's a good dancer. She's got good head shots. She is going to stay positive about it. Hopefully she gets the first call back, the second call back, and so on and so forth. So, you know, you put, you do everything you can, knowing that the competition is fierce. That's all you can do. That's all any of us can do, okay? When we go into the market, when we take trades, when you take a trade and you make money, you're taking money from somebody else, okay? I'm sure there were people that went long with JPM and other stocks too after they crashed thinking they were going to bounce. And you know what? They didn't, they didn't, you know. So you have to be conservative and have, have goals. You can have lofty goals, but be conservative in your time frame of those goals. Be realistic, Okay. And I think there's two, I think what, what, what part of the problem with the industry, the industry I'm in as far as an educational industry for the stock market is too many people are out there uh, telling people this thing, that thing, and the other thing that are educational, that teach classes and so on and so forth, like mine or run live rooms. And they're, they tell people things that are unrealistic. Like you can take a $500 account and make 100 grand in 30, 30 days or 90 days. That's not realistic. Could you? Yeah, once in a blue moon, but probably not. I couldn't even do that. And I'm good at what I do. It's not realistic. So be realistic. Is it realistic for you to risk three grand and make three? Yes. Is it realistic for you to risk $300 and make $300? Yes. Okay. Is it realistic to have a $2,000 options account and make 20 grand in a week? No. Could it happen? Yeah, if you get some huge trade, but probably not. Okay. Any questions here? Okay, I'm going to keep going. This is another one that we did. Snap. Snap closed here, gap down, fell. Boom. So, stock closed up here the night before, 11.75. This was earnings. Came down here in the morning, 11.25, fell. It's a little, little tiny one, but it had a good move, and it worked. Again, something like this doesn't move a million miles, but it was a good trade. It was cheap. Okay. This was a trade on margin. 11.30 was the cost. We got out at 11.02. Target was 11, close enough. You were 3,000, you could have made 33.60. Here's the daily. Again, stock close here, gap down. I rated it that it was gonna fall. Sell off. And it did. We shorted it in the room as a day trade. What if you took less risk? So you would have needed what? On 66,000 in buying power to take this position or so. 
That's not that bad. That's really not that bad. I mean, we don't, some things, sometimes we do expensive stocks, which you could do a put in an option if you think it's too expensive with your margin account, or you do the day trade. And again, you could have made 1,680 risking 1,500. That's a good trade. You turned it over one. Turning it over a half is a good trade, in my opinion. Now, we also did Google. This was wild yesterday. This is a big rally yesterday, actually. The day we did this was Valentine's Day. Funny to look at. Again, these are all shorts. Stock close here, gap down, fell. We shorted the tail. We got in and got out before the bounce. Again, I get in and get out quick. Entry was 93.75. 2,000 shares. Risk was, again, your risk should be the same on almost every trade. 2,900. We added above the price because I liked it, thought it was going to go. Total shares was 4,000. Average price was 93.87. And then, boom. Again, looking for a dollar. In and out. Nice trade, 42.60. So this you would have needed, figure out the buying power, slightly more. Again, you could have done an option. You could have done an option in this. You could have bought the put. If you took less risk, 1,000 shares, 2,000 total, you could have made 21.40. So again, it's the idea of playing momentum, playing the gap, and getting in quick, in and out. Any questions here so far? How are we doing? Okay. So let's get back to talking about why trade gaps. Why do they work so well? And why do they pay so well? Because of the big moves. Because gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes a gap in the first place. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap Okay, and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. So by having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and you play it. Again, whether the side is up or down, but I prefer to short. Gaps are an event. They create a sense of urgency. Hurry, hurry, hurry. You must get in here. If you don't get in here now, you're going to miss it. Everybody can see the momentum after the fact. What good is that? JPM falls off a planet. Well, it, it, you missed it. You can't do a trade like that late. Timing is important for trades. Anyways, the sense of urgency comes where you must make a determination to do it and rather quickly. But the prep work I do is in the pre-market or the post-market and I decide if I want to do it. And thus an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power. That's what you want to do. So every time I look at something and every time I analyze the gap, my whole philosophy is to analyze the daily chart. I look at a large time frame to make the trend decision of the directional bias for the gap. A directional bias meaning, is this a long or short? All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders. And someone was asking before about uh, accounts and margin and this and that. No one should ever be afraid of margin. You actually, you know, most uh, active traders, even big traders, trade on margin, okay? Again, when you're taking something that is an option, you're not taking a margin position. But big traders trade options, and they also use margin, okay? So institutional traders take big positions. Banks, again, <laughs> you know, trade the market. So that is part of their portfolio of assets. So you, you, you need to look at really what's going on and who's behind the move in something. Any questions here so far? I'm seeing the markets tanking. If we have time, we'll bring it up. So you want to look to make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame, the one in a chart which has a high degree of focus and accuracy. Using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick allows for the accuracy and direction. Using the one minute chart allows for good risk to reward trades with accuracy. Now, we were talking about options. The nice thing about options is what? You can just pay the cost. So we did a SPY put that expired in 310. Again, this is a newsletter gets emailed out to people. It costs 175, 50 contracts, which is a lot. But again, you can't lose more than you risk, okay? You could have made 171% on this trade. Beginner risk, 
six, a thousand fifty, you could have made eighteen hundred. That's a great trade. You could take, you could have spent one hundred seventy-five dollars and doubled it. Okay. Now, when did I call this on the seventh? So let's take a look. Here. Oops. Now we're in March. So stock close your gap down. I called the 400 puts, boom. Fall for planet, boom. See it? So again, if I'm in a trade and I'm up, I'm probably not holding the last day. I get this question a lot. I do not always have the best exit. I told you earlier I didn't have the best exit on Adobe. But the reality is that this fell even the last day. 385 down in here broke 385. Called it here. This is momentum, people. This is selling to the downside. We're seeing selling right now in the market. I don't know what Pal's saying, but we're selling off. So let's talk about Tesla. I called the Tesla puts. These were very recently repriced. 235, 35, 82, 25 risk, sold at 675, profit 15,400, 187% return on investment. 2200 is your profit if you're real estate 1175. These are this cheap. You could spend. 500 bucks, $235. Let's look at Tesla. The date I called this was March 7, too. Right in there, stock close to your gap down, fell. Boom, boom, boom. And again, I could have held this a little bit longer as well. So again, you're looking for momentum. This is selling people. Again, the market's selling off right now. It's about having a trained eye to read what's happening in the price action before it happens. Because after it happens, it's too late. It's too late. And then the risk assessment, the risk is too great. Do you understand what I mean? You have to assess what to do before it happens. And people say, well, how do I do that, Melissa? I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Yes, you, you learn it. You learn it. It's a skill. And you learn how to read the charts to learn it to predict what's going to happen before it happens. Does that make sense? I'm so happy the market's selling off. I predicted this would happen. Like I'm really, really, really excited right now, actually, that we're selling off. We'll see if we have time to talk about it. So let's talk about precision and detail. Accuracy counts on all trading fronts. Quality strategy, good risk to reward, right entry, correct size, proper exit. Think about the lesson, like I said, of the bank collapse. What's the takeaway? Doesn't matter how much money you have. You need to have good money management, okay? And you can be successful with a small account or a large account. There's no guarantee if you have a lot of money, you'll be successful. Being successful in the market takes detail and a certain level of precision. Detail matters. It can make a difference in you're making a lot of money one day or losing one day. So guess what? You have to learn what to do and when to do it. Without a good strategy, you will never make a dime in the market. You will never, ever get there. So how much money do you need to do this? You need a day trading retail account to do the day trades with prop or retail. You can do options with an options account, which can be a cash account. And you can take my class, learn the system. You can open up an account anywhere you want. You can ask me. You need day charts, okay? There are paid scanners. There are free scanners. You can ask me about that too. But that is what you'll need. You also need to block out between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. to train. So focus on the right information, which is the price action in the charts. And you've got to have a plan for booking money. The nice thing is, like I said, you can work from home. But it is about making money. If you are losing, you're on the wrong side of things. Like I said, the market has been choppy. And anyone that tells you otherwise is just doesn't have a clue. Okay. Today, again, is 100% confirmation to me that we are still in this range. And I think the reality is that we could be range bound. The range may widen. The range may tighten. It could be for the next couple of months into the summer of this year. It could go into the fall. It could be all year. So what are you going to do to make money if you want to trade? And if you're trading, you better learn what to do. You better know what to do. You better be careful with your trades. You better take profits off when you're up, okay? And pick specific things where you don't need the market. Although, like I said, sometimes we play the market. Any questions here so far? So in today's world, it's just not the same as 25, 30 years ago. It's just not. Even before COVID, when you think about it, people are trading and they don't understand why things aren't working the same as they used to. Even the Fed said inflation was temporary. They were wrong. Part of the problem with the situation right now with the bank bailouts and everything else, and I, again, I don't know what Jerome Powell's saying, but it's a lack of confidence. It's in reality what's happening in the system that seems to be collapsing and then the lack of confidence too. 
Yellen, the market started falling the other day when Yellen was talking. The market has no confidence in her. So it's we live in a different environment. You can be a great employee, productive, outgoing, hardworking. It may not even matter to your employer if the company can't keep you on. I truly believe that the unemployment rate is going to tick close to 4% in the coming months, could be over 4%. What the Fed, that's maybe that's when the Fed then will stop raising rates or lower rates, actually lower rates then. But the problem is one of the Fed's job is cur curbing inflation and keeping unemployment down. Unemployment almost has to spike for them to cut back rates. And, you know, when you look at all the companies, Amazon, Facebook, that are laying people off Disney since the beginning of the year, you just say, well, wait a minute, how can this, how can this unemployment number be barely ticking up or staying the same? Something doesn't add up. It's eventually going to come to roost. Again, the unemployment number is a retroactive number. So eventually we're going to see the outcome of it. Again, I don't know when, but if, if you are somebody that wants to make extra money, you can trade on the side. You can do it two days a week. You can do options on the side. We have a regular job, but you have to know what to do. Whether you're risking $100 or $1,000, you have to know what to do. And you can empower yourself to learn what to do. There's a cost involved, setting up an account, time out of your life. My class is on a weekend. It's a weekend you have to spend studying. But it's to your benefit if you want to understand it and get somewhere and get ahead. And again, nothing in life that is great comes without taking chances or risks. And you got to come to terms with that. Get out of the la-la land that you're going to make 100 grand not knowing what to do or going to free chat room trials. That is not reality. You're also not going to make 100 grand buying every dip. If it was that easy to trade, no one would ever lose. That isn't working this year, and it didn't work last year either. So you have to understand what to do and when timing is critical too. Let me see, there's a couple questions. Um, how much of this risk are you willing to lose? Uh, well, I told you my risk on options and day trades. That's it, 2,800 for a day trade, you know, sometimes it's 3,000. The options, I'm risking eight grand. Which institution is best to open an options account? Which do you recommend? I think, I think any of the big ones are pretty much all the same. Again, if you wanna to go to a place that has civic insurance, you should go and talk to them and find out that information because again, anything can happen. You know, Schwab is a big bank, you know. The first thing that you should do is go, take a look at the, in fact, I, I, should, I should have put that in here. What are the top 20 banks? Like, you know, you want to focus on being in the top 20 banks right now. And then you can open up a trading account in one of the top 20 banks. Like, I feel like that's, you know, I think the SVB was a once off. I think they were 16 or 17 before the class, but they were once off. Like, they just had poor management with that money management. So go look at the top 20 banks. And if you want to feel some kind of security, go and you can open up a trading account with one of them. As far as me recommending anybody, I don't have a relationship with anybody where I say, oh my gosh, I love this place, you, can, you know, whatever. Every place has problems and every place has, has situations. Some I don't like the platforms or the charts or whatever, or the service, some I do. Some are open 24 hours. So you gotta do what works for you, but try to go to a big place is my recommendation. Um, somebody saying, what is the most you spend in an option? Eight grand. $8,000, the cost of it. So it could be whatever it costs. So if something costs $10 a contract, then I'm doing eight. Does that make sense? The key to the system though, is the 26 points. This is how I'm able to predict the move stock make so accurately including the market but even i have gotten the market wrong sometimes this year and i'm very good at reading the market now i got it right today i thought we would fall on this move so i'm happy about that but there's times when i've been caught on the wrong side of this market since since the beginning of the year i never anticipated we'd have the rally we did in january i lost in options trades in in the market in the queues and the spy in january where i was on the wrong side of things we didn't have follow through to the downside and then in february we did now, March has been back and forth chopping. You saw the rally we had the last week. Now, a lot of people never thought this sell-off would happen here now today. Again, I don't know why they wouldn't think it because the Fed has said nothing except for the fact they're going to continue to raise rates. They haven't said anything different. So people thought the Fed was going to come in and not raise rates today or say they're going to lower them. I don't know why anyone thought that. Again, listen to what the people are saying. Don't listen to the pundits. Okay. Um, what are you saying here? I buy puts and sell them. I buy calls and sell them. 
I'm trading directional bias in the options and in my trades for the day trades. That's what I'm doing. It's, I'm not doing complicated option strategies whatsoever at all. I'm trading the momentum in them. Nike, again, is a good example. Did puts. It's fell. Okay. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you follow the process. If you come and you take my class using the checklist, this is what I teach in the class. It's called the Golden Gap Course. I think we're going to have a few minutes here that I can pull up my charts and look at the market when I get through this. But the Golden Gap system is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. If you want to learn it, the purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using the checklist. That's how I do it. It's a class on how to find, pick, and play professional bearish gaps. The class is this weekend. Now, I know that's close. The class for March is the 25th and 26th. You'd have to sign up by no later than Friday. The class for April is April 15th and 16th. If you're interested in that class, you can sign up for that too if you can't make this weekend. It's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Class tuition is $69.99. If you want to sign up, you can email me to get the forms. They are not on the website. Now, I'm doing a combo tuition special though. If you sign up for the combo, which is $74.99, you get the trends class, the Golden Gap class, which is the 25th, 26th, and March 28th, and you get the trading room free for one year and the Gap Options newsletter free for one year. This is a special going on through Friday, March 24th. If you can't do the March class, and you can do the April class, the 15th and 16th. You can sign up, pay by Friday, the 24th, get the special for the combo, and then do the class in April. And you can start in the room, you can start trading the newsletter, you can start it. So again, this is then in three weeks, okay? This is the April class here. Here's some testimonials. Let me look and see if there's any other questions. And then I think I have to, I might have to stop and start with this to show my charts do i need to do that sherry i think i might have to let me see yeah yeah if you only shared one window then yes you will okay let me let me see if i can do that stop showing screen yes 